24 hours on the sun, much calmer than the previous day. We still have plasma filaments, coronal holes, and the bright active regions to monitor, but over the last day, the higher C-class flare events were sustained by the active regions, all stemming from the flare and CME we saw yesterday, and which we'll re-watch here a few times. As we mentioned yesterday, the CME is weak, but directly fired at Earth. Both NOAA and NASA's Enlil spiral show the eruption clipping our planet over the weekend, and they also agree that minor to moderate geomagnetic storms are likely all we'll see from the event. We'll also continue monitoring the filaments in active regions for further eruptions today. Quick alert for the United States. The potential for tornadoes and derechos is real tonight. As the system builds up in Texas and then begins racing east, this should be one of the more dangerous weather events on the planet tonight. Eyes open in the south. We're sticking with the USA again here for a look at the magnitude 4 threshold range as a predictor for California earthquakes. This is not only our threshold for blood echoes worldwide, but it's also our threshold for USA alerts as well. Here they are using a bit longer timeline, but they're coming up with pretty much the same conclusion. In getting ready for the James Webb Telescope, look and compare left and right. One of the best things Webb will do if it ever launches is see in closer to the stars and capture some of the interior planets they've had trouble seeing thus far. Folks, there is no link to this. I just wanted to open a window to the goofiness of mainstream scientists in these fields. Seems like, by the title, it's a fantastic book for people in our community, especially with it being free to read. But the words electric and electricity do not appear in the work, leaving a 0% chance of this text explaining how galaxies are actually dynamic. Up next, something real in the cosmos, the wrong binary flared. It's a rare event in space to see one from the so-called polar, but they believe it was not only the minor star flaring, but that a CME may be responsible for some of the readings they recovered, and to be able to spot a CME on another star, it would need to be a kill shot level event if it were to have happened on the sun. Bit of cosmology up next. They found yet another early galaxy rotating, and this one can't take their previous explanation using its own mass because it's so small. This once again confirms that the early universe theory on these galaxies needs to be rewritten as their behavior continues to surprise. When it's a tiny galaxy, you need to start thinking that band-aids aren't going to stop the bleeding there. Now last but not least, even though this paper won't be in print for another month, you'll hopefully recall our coverage of the preprint online more than a month ago. Polar summer mesospheric echoes are driven by dusty plasma and ice in the upper reach of our atmosphere, and that charge is what delivers the conditions for the echoes, and their increase over the last few decades' time is what we had considered a function of the weakening Earth magnetic field, letting in more charged particles, and perhaps the dust event beginning in our solar system as well. An increase in dust would also increase the echoes. Today, we get another nod in the echo realm, this time trying to explain a first-of-its-kind or at least record event observation in the vertical motion. These anomalies should continue to show up as the Earth's field weakens faster and faster, and you can learn more about the ongoing Earth changes and... Be